I am really glad when I look over there in my surveillance monitor and see all the snow we got that I've got a really nice long rollback because I'm kind of probably going to be busy tending to the snow situation. And uh, a moment ago when I was getting things lined up here I noticed that I have well you probably can't see it Maybe, maybe it'll silhouette a little bit against my finger, but I've bent one of our little antenna thingies there and I'm pretty sure that it's not going to break off when I straighten it because it's only bent up about 30 degrees from horizontal, so uh, anyway, we'll fix that. But we've got a really long rollback and uh, <clears throat> I ramble a lot. Uh, but I talk about some interesting stuff. I talk a lot about camera lenses. <laughs> uh, let's get into the rollback and uh, get it over with. And then we'll recompose and we'll work on our F2s here. It is... Uh let me look at the clock here. In about 30 seconds, it will be two hours since uh, episode 1042 uploaded. And I've already received a couple of comments from people telling me that uh, the uh, one of the legs on the second tripod that I did yesterday or maybe I should say, yeah, I guess it was yesterday now. Um, can't talk and work at the same time. Uh, has come loose, and <clears throat> we're gonna we're gonna check that out. I'm not gonna put any more glue on that. I I was noticing when I was watching my own video then felt with the macro lens that I was just I was working at it way too hard and, you know, the the uh, plastic was already melding together, so... Okay, now before we throw our hood into reverse and back it up here so we can look at those tripods, uh, let's let's do the, uh, the last one of the F1s. Okay, it's at rather an awkward angle here to... to video. You know, I was I was just realizing that if I raise the tripod up a little bit and come at more of a down angle, we can see it better. I don't have to have the clock in every scene. Okay, now we can see it a little bit better. Not as good as if we put the macro lens on, I guess, though, eh? All right. Now, can I get in here? You know what, I, I can't get in here. I'm going to have to uh, back it off and uh, use the macro lens like a telephoto. That way I can get in a little better. And uh, actually, you'll, you'll be, be able to see the mess I make a lot better too. Okay, I hope my voice is going to hold out here. Just positioning the uh, part in the tweezer. Okay, now got our CA here. I mean, our extra thin. Now I can get my hand in there just a little bit better. We got about uh, two inches more space here. Yeah, I do believe that's more or less down. Try and push it down here. I don't know, it just, from my perspective, it looks like a sort of a kind of dry.
No, it's not going to work. Okay, let's just leave that. I don't think anything's going to get in there unless I catch it with the easy line when I try to do the rigging later. It's not going to fall over. Now, before we turn our ship around here so that I can uh, get the camera in on the other side, have it looking this way, so we can check out those uh, uh, tripod derricks. Uh, there's there's something that I had meant to to tell you in the last episode, and I forgot. Uh, do you remember when I dubbed in the ship's horn, when I slid our hood into position? Well, that wasn't my idea. That was uh, Peter from uh, Oddscale Modeling. Uh, yeah, not not all the good ideas are mine. And when when I uh, ad adapt or adopt uh, so somebody else's good idea, I like to give credit. I I don't like to steal somebody's thunder. Uh, no. <clears throat> Speaking of Peter, I was I was watching his uh, last episode of the uh, one four hundred scale Queen Mary two, and. You know, a lot of you are watching them, but uh, if you're not, uh, you you got to watch this because he's he's not just taking the kit out of the box and gluing it together. He is putting in fiber optic lighting, and and he's got little fiber optic uh, individual lines running to each porthole, so that it's going to be a you know just delicately illuminated. You know those Christmas trees that you can buy and and they've got little fiber optic uh, lines running all over and you got all these little pinpoint lights? Well that's that's sort of what it's going to be like. And if he can uh, manage to have it so that they're not too intense it's going to look extremely extremely realistic. Um, <clears throat> I remember about three years ago uh, when uh, Scott uh, was doing, I can't remember what ship it was. Anyway, he was trying to rig up uh, LED lighting or something and I suggested fiber optics to him. And I forget why he, he, he said it wouldn't work for him. But uh, for whatever reason he didn't do it. But, uh, but Peter is. And uh, I can hardly wait to see that ship when it's done. Uh, yeah, you, you gotta give this guy a, a watch, you know. He's uh, uh, he's doing pretty darn good. Uh, I, I should ship this this hood to Australia and let him finish it for me because I don't want to do the rigging. <laughs> I will though. I'll, I'll do the rigging. I I want to get at the Rodney and I don't want to put the I don't want to put the hood in the case without some rigging on there. I think I I, I replied to somebody this evening that. Uh, I wasn't planning on doing very much, but I want to. I want to run enough that it looks like there's aerial wires at least. You know, uh, uh, I, I I realize that a lot of you are kind of disappointed uh, at the beginning uh, when we first started this uh, the ship. A lot of people wanted me to do the the real wooden decking, and I didn't do it. And I, I know they were disappointed, and they were. Uh, I, I've got to keep this build fun for me, and uh, if it if it sort of gets to the place where I think it's it's sort of overwhelming, it's not going to be fun anymore. Uh, I've been really lucky that I haven't snapped off a mast yet. Knock on wood. Uh, I'm not superstitious, but it's just, I just did that just for fun. Anyway, uh, let's let's. Uh, turn our ship around, get the camera on the other side, and we'll look at what people thought was loose legs. I don't think it is. I think they're, I think they're glued down, but in the wrong place. Anyway, let's, let's uh, turn the ship around here. Okay, we are turned around here now. And I did not dub in the horn. I don't want to wear that out. Besides, I was backing the ship in. I don't think they sound the horns when they back up, do they? Don't they sort of go beep, 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 beep? Or is that a truck? I know the difference. Uh, 
Anyway, this is this is the Derek in question. Somebody said the second Derek, and I, I know what they saw. Uh, it's not loose. We'll, we'll stick on the macro lens and I'll show you. Uh, <clears throat> okay, now speaking of lenses, you know, every time I take off my glasses, I'm reminded of the, the uh, you know, and I, I put them down. Uh, I'm not doing that for theatrics. Do you remember in the, uh, I think it was the movie called Airplane or Airplane 2 or, you know, one of those, and Robert Stack, he took off his glasses in a dramatic way and he still had another pair of glasses on. Well, every time I take off my glasses so that I can, you know, see distance better like, like you, uh, I think of that. I'm not doing this for dramatics. Uh, anyway, um, what was I going to say? Uh, okay, speaking of, of lenses, <laughs> uh, about three or so years ago, uh, I wrote out a big check for a brand new car, which is still brand new, but it's it's going on four years old now, I guess. Anyway, it's just sitting in the driveway and I'm not using it. And and the, and yet I've got, uh, somebody was sort of complaining the other day. Uh, uh, not complaining, but commenting about the, the expensive lenses I've gotten, all these lenses and stuff like that. And, and, but you know what? I use them every single day. And uh, I've got this new camera coming, the Z9. And uh, I think I mentioned to you, I'm to you camera buffs. You're interested, I know. Uh, I'm I'm getting the uh, 24 200 f4. And uh, today I was talking to uh, Andrew at Photo Central, and I told him that I w that I was also going to uh, take the uh, the uh, 14 to 30 millimeter wide angle. The lens that's on the camera right now is is uh, 16 to 35. Now the 14 is, will be a little bit wider, uh, and it's a regular uh, Z mount lens or Z mount lens. Uh, you know, it's custom made for the Z for the Z bodies, and and the, the Z Z9 or Z9 is a Z is a Z body, so it's going to be a, a perfect match. And I'm think I was thinking afterwards after I hung up and after telling my take it I was thinking, you know that, that's a that's a, a lot of money you know, but then I thought it'll be something I use I use every day, so you you might be thinking those of you who are camera buffs well there's not a whole lot of difference between the lens you've got on the camera right now, and and the one you're going to get well it'll be a little bit wider when I want when I do wide angle scenes like right now it's maxed out for wide angle. And what's really nice about this lens that's on the camera right now is when I have it set to 35 millimeter, I can get in nice and close. In fact, where is my uh, thing that I use for measuring? I can't find it now, but anyway, I can get about this far from the front of the lens to the subject, and it, it'll still be in focus. I don't know if I'll be able to do that with the new lens or not. It, it, uh, I might not, but... Uh, I'll, I'll uh, work something out, don't worry. Anyway, uh, where am I going with this? Well, I just wanted to let you know that, uh, yes, I've got uh, I've got four lenses here at the model table and I use all of them regularly, not the super macro very much, but I, but I use the other ones. I got three more in the, where the computer is that I don't use very often. And, and uh, for those of you who are camera buffs and you want to know what they are, it's a, uh, a 50 millimeter 1.4 normal lens. It's a fast lens. I, I don't use it, but if I want to, you know, shoot some scenes in, in, in the dark, well, that's the lens to use. Then I've got a, a 70 to 200 millimeter zoom. And it, it is a fast lens for, for, a, len for a lens like that. It's a 2.8. It's 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 pretty pretty fast. It's actually faster than the 24-200 that I'm getting in the, with the Z mount. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll end up uh, giving it to my son or something because I'm not using it. He might want get a kick out of it. Uh, he, he's got a, a 
uh, and D810, by the way. Well, it's my old camera. It's the one that, that I had before I bought this one. Uh, I'm, I'm having trouble getting at this, aren't I? Uh, and the other lens that I've got is a, a 150 to 600 millimeter uh, Tamron. Uh, it's the uh, and those of you who are camera buffs. It's it's the it's the second version of it. They came out with two. There's there's then they had the improved version. I've got the improved version, and it's actually pretty good. I've shot some shots with the with the moon, uh, and it's got good stabilization and nice and sharp. And the autofocus works well with the Nikon camera. And uh, anyway, that's the other three lenses that you never see and probably never will. Uh, but uh, photography has is, is, uh, always been a, of an interest to me ever since I was a teenager. I've, I've mentioned that before. It's sort of like woodworking. This is sort of something that I'm doing now because I don't like to stand up. <laughs> and I'm, I'm enjoying it. And we're going to do the Rodney. Don't worry. We're going to do the Rodney. We'll get there. Uh, yeah, if ever, if ever you have any, any questions, you know, and you want to know anything, uh, unless it's not too personal, I'll be happy to answer your questions in the comments. Um, I don't care. Uh, go for it. Worst that can happen is uh, I just won't. I just won't answer. Uh, anyway, let's let's uh, slide the camera over there. We're, I'm going to put it about where the where the macro lens is, and we'll have it look this way. And we'll we'll look at this little part that people are telling me one of the legs came loose. Well, maybe it did. There's uh, something that I forgot to mention here about this lens. It's actually kind of important. We're talking about uh, getting a different lens that was very similar. Uh, the autofocusing on this one jams. Um, what will happen is I'll, I'll use it on autofocus. It'll jam and then I can't manual focus it. I can't, I can't focus it at all and I have to sort of knock on it and, and, and wiggle on the focusing ring and then all of a sudden it, it sort of lets itself go free and then I can use it again. So, uh, and, and I really miss that because there are times that it was really handy to be able to <clears throat> push the autofocus button on the camera and pinpoint autofocus on something. Uh, so, uh, now I don't know, it, it, I, I could get this fixed. I know I could get it fixed. The fact that it's got that little, that little uh, dot on the on the lens that, that doesn't affect it it would outside if the sun the sunlight was to shine on it but it doesn't affect it here at the model table which is pretty much all i do at least with this lens uh, now there's another thing i've got to be mindful of the fact that you're away over there but the camera that's picking up the audio is right here so i gotta be careful i don't start shouting uh, <laughs> Okay, now, the macro lens is, is, is moved right in on the two back legs of the second, second uh, 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 derrick that we installed, the ones that people thought it was loose. And I, I know what it is that they saw. They, they saw the same thing that I saw when I was saying, did it come loose? Remember that in, in yesterday's episode? Um, okay, so I'm going to just show you here what it, what it is, and and now we'll we'll swap we'll swap scenes out and we'll make this one big. Okay. Now now what you're seeing here is this is not loose. This is glued in place, but what has happened is. The, the hole is, is much larger than the peg, which is only part way, part way down into the hole. And I think what has happened is the, the peg that goes down has dissolved a little bit as well. And, uh, but but it, is, it is in there. In fact, I can actually, I can actually see it without my magnification hood, that, that, it, that it is actually down in that hole. Um, so so it, is, it is glued. Uh, I don't. I don't. I'm looking at the the other the other three right now, and uh, they're they're all they're all glued in place. But anyway, thank you for noticing and thank you for commenting. Oh, it was. 
it, it was kind of ironic. The, the two comments that I got, both of the guys, their name was Mark. <laughs> uh, so that was kind of unique. Uh, okay. Uh, what were we, we were going to do something here this evening. What was it? Uh, I'll think of it after I press the stop button here. Okay, I did think of what it was I wanted to mention. I found that uh, template or whatever you want to call it that I use to, for, for closest focusing distance. And, and what I do is I'll put it on the front of the lens and I know that I can get that close to something as long as I've got this thing set to its closest distance. I don't need to look in the viewfinder or, or, or anything. I can just well, I, I look in the um, I look in the monitor to to get everything lined up, but I don't need to zoom in to make sure it's focused because I, I know it is. Um, and then when I open it out, it's uh, th the same thing for my uh, uh, twenty four one twenty. When I have it set to one twenty, I know that from here to here, plus plus this much. Uh, is is perfect focusing distance. I use this I use this a lot when we did the Bismarck uh, on the one with the 120. Um, anyway, uh, that's what it was that I wanted to mention. Now, uh, 1035, almost 1036. We haven't been uh, at the model table this late ever before that I can remember. Uh, if we if we were, I never showed the clock. Um, We'll probably never be this late again. Uh, yeah, uh, we got we got all our F ones on. Now we got to work on the F twos, but we're not going to be doing that tonight. We'll see you in the morning. Okay, it is morning, but just barely morning. Yeah, a couple of minutes from now, I wouldn't be able to say that. Uh, but I was reminded once again why it is that I don't like winter. Yeah, I got myself uh, being dragged around behind my self-powered walker this morning and uh, had to come in about three times to thaw out. It, it was no fun, let me tell you. Uh, winter used to be a sort of a fun challenge. It's not a fun challenge anymore, it's just a challenge. <laughs> okay, enough complaining. Let's uh, recompose here and, uh, yeah, see what we can do. Okay, we have our hood turned around. Now these F2s, they go, they get mounted on the side of the gunnel. And I do remember when I was putting the railing on, I was, I was seeing little marks. And I was I was thinking to myself something must go there. Now I know what it was. Um, but I also remember that the uh, railing in, in on some of them was sitting on the on top of the gunnel instead of just in inside the lip, if you know what I mean. And um, so we might have a bit of a problem uh, with with those. Two, four, six, one, two, three, yeah, and three on this side, so that, that, uh, <clears throat> that's our six. You know what, why don't we do something uh, easy first? Let's uh, straighten up this, uh, I don't know if you can see it there now. You know, I, why don't I just move you in instead of saying things like, you probably can't see it. Let's make it so that you can. Okay, the mast that is that I'm touching right now that is straight, and uh, but but this little mast that is coming up out of the crow's nest is crooked. It's leaning to the to the right. But the one that I must have bent yesterday is is this one right here. Now I don't know if this is the best way to do this or 
Should I maybe just push it down? Um, could be my angle is wrong there. Usually I have pretty good luck by just, just squeezing. Oh, come on, Ron. That's, uh... You know, that's a, one of the nice, d delicate little pieces of detail. It's still not quite right, you know. I'd... Sorry about my fingers here. Okay. Now, let me look in the monitor. How does that look? It could go down just a little bit here. I got my hands in at a different angle and got the camera out of the way. Um, now this top one here. Uh, in all likelihood I, I should maybe wait and do this last. They Not, not only are they crook it this way, sort of like my uh, arthritic finger, but they are, um, you know, the, the whole thing sh has, should be turned this way. Now, I think before I try to straighten this short mass that, that, that is coming up out of the crow's nest, I think maybe what I should do is use, take my heat gun and heat this plastic right here and just get it nice and hot probably about 250 degrees or so maybe I'll test on a piece of sprue see how hot I can get without it actually uh, slumping if you know what I mean um, and, and then and then bend it over and then when it cools there's less of a chance of snapping it off because I, I don't know how how bad the joint is right there like it, it could be that it's just about ready to give way now I know a person can glue it back on but I mean why if you don't have to right I, I wonder if these these things rotated were they sort of directional you know they can look like that kind of an antenna like a, a an, an old-fashioned TV antenna <laughs> kind of like the TV antenna standing over by my fireplace it's directional uh, yeah, you can actually pick up TV with an antenna still. Um, we get uh, th uh, three or four channels here in, in Winnipeg that are still broadcasting over the air. Otherwise, uh, everything is cable, of course. All right. Um, all right, let's, let's just leave that, and uh, we'll move on to and try and put down a couple of F2s here. Early this morning when I'm getting myself going, I check the weather. And then I check my surveillance system to see how much snow am I going to have to clear today. And while I'm looking at the surveillance system, a little rabbit hops into view in the carrot pad cam. And uh, yeah, and it, it sort of pauses a moment where the carrots are. And, and it, it kind of roots a little bit, and then it hops off to the side, of, and, uh, and I'm watching it, and it seems to be eating something that's on top of the snow. So I zoom in, and I, I sort of watch, and it turns out it's the black oil sunflower seeds that blew out of the bird feeder and landed on the top of the snow. <laughs> yeah, I never thought a rabbit would like those, but why not? I probably would like them myself. Uh, you know what, I think I should, I should take some of them and put them in the uh, oven and roast them and uh, <laughs> just, well, they're pretty fattening and I, I don't need the calories, right? Uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah, I thought that was kind of interesting. Okay. 
This one should go on easy. It's got to go right there. I just barely see it, but there's two little marks. And this pedestal part, I guess, would go right in between the two. Now, uh, I think maybe the Reval glue might be the best for that. Except the problem with, with using the Reval is that it uh, takes a while to, uh, to dry or set or whatever you want to call it. I guess I guess it would be dry. And uh, the, the part can slowly slump over if you have no way of holding it in place. <clears throat> Unless I was to, to rig up some sort of a you know, some sort of a jig that would hold it like in the helping hands and then Either that, or why don't we just use the extra? Put I know we could put some extra thin on right on the bottom. I should have had this figured out before I pushed record. Okay, regrettably I didn't show it being done because I forgot to push record. But uh, what I've done here is I've uh, CA glued it on. And uh, I'll just repeat what I said when I thought I was recording. And that is that I know that the CA glue is not as strong as if I was to have used the extra thin and melded the plastic together. But on the other hand, this might be a blessing in disguise because should I accidentally catch something on it, instead of it snapping off, uh, you know, the, the plastic, right, like say right there, It'll break. It should break where where the where the CA is uh, uh, connecting it to the gunnel. <clears throat> so it, it like I say, it might be a blessing in disguise if it's not real strong. Um, and on the other hand, if if I don't catch anything on it, and it'll it'll just stay there the the way the way it is, and uh, and that'll be fine. It's not going to fall off. Well, we got one on. Um, now we're probably going to get more on today, but it's going to have to be in tomorrow's episode. Uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you know what happens. In about uh, a little over an hour and a half, I've got a coffee visitor coming, and I've got a lot of editing to do and so on. And you've heard that, you've heard this spiel before. So, uh, thanks for watching, everybody, if you're still with me. And all being well, we'll see you tomorrow.